And welcome, folks, to another episode, episode two of Steady Dropping Dimes, brought to you by our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. You're to find out the places to go, the things to, the places to eat, the people to meet. Destination Ann Arbor is the portal to Ann Arbor to give you that 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 map. They're like your tour guide to all things Ann Arbor. And through the course of this series, we're going to be taking you to a number of those places, introducing you to new things. We're even going to involve you in the process, asking you, where should we go? Where should we meet? What should we eat? All of these things are going to come as a, as you participate in this show and help us go and grow. And I'm I'm determined to bring back something that I did last year called the Beer Tour with my Detroit Lions. You know, I found some really really cool craft beer spots in Ann Arbor. We'll be shouting some of them out uh, on the broadcast as well. And I'm determined to have a a drop and dimes beer tour as well. So if we can get enough people involved, enough people interested in what looks like it's going to be a special season for the Honolulu Blue and Silver. I think it would be a great thing to do for this show to get with the people and get on out there and have some fun. But without further ado, let me introduce my esteemed guest, co-host, my boys, because we have a serious discussion to get into today. Like, you know, dropping dimes, you get deep. And we talk about all sports. We talk about more sports in Michigan. Just so happens that this first topic indirectly has something to do with Michigan as well. We'll start off first with the man to my right on the screen, Mr. Daniel Horton, who, Daniel, we can, I mean, you look a little brighter today, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We finally got set up today. Got everything going, so I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Former University of Michigan point guard, McDonald's All-American, uh, and just my dude, one of the first recruitments I actually covered was Daniel Horton. And then at the bottom of the screen, I'm just, the thing that surprises me, I don't see the Emmys in the background. I don't see the Emmys in the background. What, what happened no, to the Emmys? Me. I'm unplugged. I got a mic, though. My mic, it works. My mic is plugged up. I'm still not plugged up here. And I didn't want to look crazy, so I put the – I took the – ah, I put that behind. So, y'all know, you know what I mean? But I'm I'm staying true to it. Still unplugged. <laughs> I mean, but why? But why? I, I'm I trying to figure why. it out. Sam, how long you been knowing me? How long have you been working up? You know I just be doing crazy stuff. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea why, but this mic, do I sound good? You sound great, man. You well, sound great. Well, mic, the Amazon I'm, boy I'm, came right on time. I'm proud to be associated with you. As I said, Steady Dropping Dimes brought to you by Destination Ann Arbor. You can check them out at www.annarbor.org. That's annarbor.org slash myannarbor. And that's another reminder. We are going to do a My Ann Arbor sort of tour where we each are going to pick out a few of our favorite spots and we're going to have our friends at Golden Limo kind of shuttle us through to those spots and we're going to take the, uh, we're going to have the camera crew there filming us as we go through, you know, so you can show because I feel like I need proof. Like last week I talked about going over to Rolling Hills. People act like I, I don't really ride a bike, like I didn't really know where Rolling Hills is. They were like Sam, Rolling Hills is in Ipsy. I know that. We, You know, when we talk destination in our, we talk Washtenaw County. I know where Rolling Hills is. How many times I've ridden that trail, ridden up that hill? How many times, oh, man? I'm not playing. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so we are gonna, we're going to go to all these spots, and we're going to be looking for your suggestions as well as our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. They saw the vision, got behind it, and feel like this could be a great vehicle to opening some of the doors to Ann Arbor. We're going to tell you about what I think is a hidden gem in Ann Arbor toward the middle of the show that, man, I know my kids love it. If you live in town, outside of town, or coming to town for a game or something, you definitely want to check this spot out with the kids. So we'll tell you about it coming up. But, fellas, uh, the news this week uh, is, is dominated by two big topics, one of them being Aaron Rodgers, who lasted all of four snaps. We'll jump into that a little bit later. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a sports story like with so much buildup that in the blink of an eye, in the snap of a finger, it was done and over with. And then the other story was Mel Tucker, fellas. Michigan State um, hired him away from Colorado after a year in Boulder. 
Uh, he beat Michigan during the COVID year. He beat Michigan, uh, you know, with with Kenneth Walker III. You know, he, I, I, I hope I hope Kenneth Walker III got a percentage of that contract because he's largely responsible for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and someone said, <laughs> okay, I had to put that up on the screen. I had to put that up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> ah, AK said Bill Tucker dropping 800 million dimes. I think you mean 80 million dimes. No, no, no. 800 million 10 cents. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, you said you weren't a math guy. Look at you. Look at you. Count that money. <laughs> I can count that paper. Nah. Okay, AK. I, I need my that. money on time. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, man. It's, it's not. The, the story is not a laughing matter, first of all. Uh, for those who haven't followed it, uh, where have you been? You must have been hibernating or something. Uh, because story broke late Saturday night, must have been just after midnight Sunday morning, that Mel Tucker had been accused of sexual harassment by uh, uh, victim's advocate, sexual assault victim's advocate, Brenda Tracy, who, full disclosure, I've spoken to, I've interviewed, she's been in studio, uh, applaud her work, support her work. Uh, she has been uh, a pioneer in the field of, as she would say, setting the expectation of raising awareness about um, sexual assault on campuses, uh, you know, it kind of counseling student athletes on how to navigate. And what is a very, I mean, it's a very exciting time in life, but it's also a time that where you, you need to learn a lot, not just about, uh, you know, other people, but yourself, how you conduct yourself in a new environment, right? So uh, been very instrumental in that way. And so she went and she had spoken to Michigan State at one point, and somewhere along the way, a, a relationship, the nature of which we aren't going to really get into, because I don't know that we're in position to, to really be able to pass judgment on what their relationship was I, i'm frankly i'm a bit confused by it i mean based on the things you read you know they had you know, lengthy conversations late you know over a half hour late night i don't know i don't know what their relationship was and so i don't want to spend time on that what i do want to spend time on is how mel tucker put himself in this position fellas i i just i i said on my radio show i feel like this was a galactically stupid position or, or you know the galactically stupid sort of thought process that that he had as as talking about from a personal life standpoint and being in the position that he was in i i just don't see how he let himself get in that in that place but th this is this is the, the setup to lead into the conversation i guess we'll start with you daniel your your reaction to it uh, it's, it's it's a tough situation, man. It's a bit like you said, as far as his judge the judgment part goes. It's a like when you read some of the details, like the the, the falling for each other over mutual love of sneakers and all these type of things. It just felt like you know this guy of his position, like you can't fall for you can't those little minuscule things can't allow you to you know make poor decisions and put yourself in a position not only to let yourself down, but let your family down, let your, the players you coach down. Now he's not in the building. He's not coaching anymore. The guys he recruited there. So it's, it's like you said, without trying to, without passing judgment on the particulars or the details of what went on between them, it's just, it's an unfortunate situation that a black man in his position, you know, didn't understand the assignment and, and put himself in a position to, to, to drop the ball like that. So it's, a, you know, even as a, you know, rivalry aside, right? Like it's, mm -hmm. as a, as a, as a guy that likes to support black coaches. Obviously, I came to Michigan because they had a black coach at the time, right? You want to try to support other black men in, in, in this profession, in this business, the sports business, and, you know, it's a bit unfortunate to, to see that, so. Devin? Yeah, I agree. I, I think it was, a, you know, I have a saying that I like to go by, and it goes like this. You play goofy games, you win goofy prizes. And I just felt like he played a kind of a goofy game, and like like we can't. I want to get into her and the relationship. That's a lot of phone calls, you know, a lot of phone calls. And, and I'm not talking to anybody that long. Sam, 
Don't try to have a 30 minute conversation. I'm uncomfortable being on here because this feel like a phone call with y'all for this long. <laughs> this all I'm saying. What are we doing? Why are we talking on the phone so much? You know, I, you know, that's that's you know, that's just me. But uh, yeah, I mean, you just can't put yourself in that position, especially uh, a woman who's you know her whole whole thing is like the advocacy for you know rape victims and different things like that. You just gotta, you just gotta stick, steer clear. Like you know what I mean? Just do. I don't know, and 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 the thing is, is like, she's kind of a coworker, right? Yeah, technically, exactly. And it's just like that's just like an unwritten rule. And you know, sometimes people do date coworkers, and it works out just fine, and they get married, but they both don't work for that company no more. I can tell you that. Yeah. Right. right. So the thing is, like, you you know, were you gonna just give up your job? Were you in that much love or whatever? You know, I just I don't understand that, but. Yeah, moving on, I guess. I mean, yeah, well, this is, this is, <laughs> but you, you nailed exactly where I wanted to go with this. Because even if you believe him, and this is not, this is not me again passing judgment on what their relationship was. I'm saying, let's, let's stipulate for a second that he's telling the truth about what it was, about everything, but about everything. You still getting fired. Yeah. You still getting fired. And you're still getting fired because of your poor judgment. You just said co-worker. In a way, she's a subordinate. Because yeah. her working for the university university is wholly dependent on your decision mm-hmm. to bring her in. Mm-hmm. You control whether or not she can work on your campus. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't work directly for you, but the work that she does for you is Thank dependent you. upon you. Mm-hmm. Right? So in a way, she's a support. And that's that's poor judgment, number one. You know, I always wonder. You know that that like thing, like hey, blur lines. That's the definition of blur lines, man. Yes, it is. And yes, like gray is. area, everybody like, what is gray area? That's gray area. Right, like, why so y'all? Then, here's the second thing. I don't even know how you get to the point. If if you move past that, she's a subordinate. Okay, and you okay? So you you've cleared that hurdle. How do you get to the point where you feel comfortable enough to to show romantic interest in, in a woman who's on your campus to tell her story, to advocate for victims, to to counsel your student athlete? How do you get to the point where you even feel comfortable making romantic overtures? Yeah. Right. How, how do you get yourself to that place? Right. You, I mean, you not to say that. She can't have a relationship, but I'm saying you've already you already see that this is a questionable thing because she's supporting it. Now you got this other thing, like you know, you want to make sure you're coming across the, the, the right way. Yes. How do you how do you get comfortable that you're coming across the right way? That's poor judgment number two. And then number three, number three, and this is this is one that just goes back to you said, you know, uh, supporting black coaches. This is a big this is why where I think you said rivalry aside. I was listening to Mike Hart talking about how you know it, how moving it was for him to coach Michigan for a half because there aren't there aren't that many black coaches in the game, right? So you know you want to see yeah you, know, you want to see any coach just if you go out if it doesn't work you want it to be on the merits of what you do in the profession, not something like this, something that's eminently avoidable because I know you you fellas. You had to. I'm gonna liken this to like a a a, a thing that we all, uh, as black men, go through growing up. Your your parents or uncles or someone in your life sits you down and say you can't do everything that everyone else does. Yep. Just the rules other are a little it, bit different for you. Things are a little bit different for you. So I got that. I got that thing. Uh, that talk about being pulled over by the cops. It was always a thing. Hey, look. This is how you act when you pulled over by the cops because it won't always go that way for you. That that it, the way that it goes for someone else. I remember the very not, first not time only, I got pulled over. Man. Not very only first being pulled, pulled over by the cops, Sam, being in the presence of cops in my well, opinion. Listen, yeah. listen. The very first time I got pulled over by a cop in Flint, I got put in the back of the police car for like doing. I was doing forty three in a thirty five. I got put in the back of a police car. All I said was, what's the problem, officer? Oh, man, he went off. He went off, right? So fast forward 
to being at the university and I did everything that I was supposed to do, but that, and I got that reaction. The, I was at the university of Michigan. I remember driving down, uh, I was down by the CCRB. Uh, I, I made a left turn without signaling. All right. Cop pulled me over at the time. The window on my car wouldn't go down. It, the, the, the motor was out, right? It, it is what it's it hard is. Hard times. Right, hard times, right? The motor yeah. is out on the, on the car. So the cop is approaching the car. My window won't go down. So I open the door and I put my hands out like this. Like, hey, officer, my window won't go down. My hands, I'm speaking on it, but my window won't go down. My hands are out, right? My hands are out. Everything's fine. I just want to show you that I'm opening up the door to the car. Everything is good. And the cop was like, man, what the hell are you doing? Calm down. I said, man, I was just telling you, you didn't, you didn't flip your signal. I said, I just wanted to make sure there were no misunderstandings. He's like, man, you don't have to do all, you don't have to put your hands up. What, what are you doing? Calm down. Right. But my point is, that's how I was conditioned. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told. That's what I was told how you have to act. it Because sometimes it might go a different way. Like the first time I was pulled over, right? What imagine what would have happened if I had opened my door with that first cop? It just it just opened my door. It was like, what's up? It might have gone a different way. Mm. Would you do it the same way every time? Because that is what you're told as a black man, you got to do. So how that didn't apply to him in his profession as a not just a coach, but a black coach. Yeah. Very few of you in that position, right? All those issues that I just brought up that are, are, are things that are warning signs, are cautionary tales, are things that would tell you, you know what, just because Brian, Brian Harrison getting down like he's getting down at Auburn, I can't get down like that. Uh -uh. I can't do what he do. Now, Brian Harrison eventually got fired, but he still got to coach the team. He still got, like, you can't get down like that. I don't know how that didn't register in his mind as he was going through this, fella. No, that's, that's a great point, Sam. I know I coached down, down in Texas at an HBCU for two years. And that's one thing we always talked about as coach, as a coaching staff, like, hey, we have to be better. We have to, we have to, when we travel to national tournaments or we travel to events, we have to, we not only represent ourselves in the school, we have, we have to set a certain standard because we don't, like you said, the, the rules are a little bit different. Like you see other coaches there in the clubs at night and the, the the strip clubs at night. And, you know, for us, you know, you can't get caught in there. Like that's not a place as a coach that's aspiring to move up and uh, actually uh, represent the HBC or representing, you know, our people. You don't want to get caught up in the story where you hear other coaches who are going on to become head coaches in college football that had a, a you know, love going to those places. Right. And I can call names. I don't want to put anybody names out there, but I'm, I'm, Please, I'm, I'm, I'm in Texas, so you know who I'm talking about, right? But like you just, you know, we we can't do those things. So it's, you have to. It's a certain code and a certain law, a certain standard that you have to uphold and live by as a as in that profession. So he he definitely dropped the ball. Yeah, man. Um, I tell you one thing that I do believe in in this whole thing because uh, I. I speculated on this uh, on my radio show. I believe Brenda Tracy, when she, by the way, when she said she didn't leak this, she ain't leaked this. I, I believe that 100%. Because if she had wanted to leak it, why wouldn't she do it back in December when she filed the complaint? Right? Why wouldn't she do it in July when the, when the Title IX investigation was concluded? Why, does she, why wouldn't she do it right before the season? You know, and all eyes are, are definitely on that or or right after the first game. I mean, there were opportunities before yeah. Sunday for her to do it. But what I had heard and what has since been confirmed, I said this a, a, a couple of days ago, that I had heard that she was getting calls from the media. She was getting calls from the media. And she's like, you know, her name isn't supposed to be released. They can talk about her internally within university leadership, but they, it, she, they are barred by Title IX from releasing her name to the public, right? So all of a sudden she's getting these calls from the media and it dawns on her that they, someone over there has released my name. And at that point, that's when she let the report go. It's like, okay, well, let, since they're releasing names, I don't know what they're saying. Let me get my side of the story 
out. I buy that. Now, why would Michigan State do that? And this is, again, this is Mel Tucker not thinking. Yeah, not man. thinking. Not just, just think, having a little bit of foresight, man. Devin, you know this like I know this. Mel Tucker been stealing money, man. He been stealing money. <laughs> Mel Tucker not no $9.5 million coach. He is not a $9.5 million. Don't let me... Maybe you can't say that. Maybe you can't say that. <laughs> so, hey, man. <laughs> I mean, that should be going to the people that's in the arena is where it should be going, first of you all. Right. Yeah, there ain't no nine right. and a half million dollar coaches. The, the nine and a half million dollars should be split amongst the football players that are making these coaches famous. Because we're looking at Dabo, and Dabo don't look as good without Trevor Lawrence and, and, and these guys. So let's just be clear about that. <laughs> yeah. He's a really good player to be that. You know? Yeah, he should have gave to Ken Walker the third, yeah. you know, half that. You're right. You know, maybe three quarters of that. My point is Dang, three quarters. I don't man, know. Man, like you look at you look at Prime. People in Colorado are like Prime worth the money. Prime worth money. Let's let's raise enough money to give him a raise right now. You know, before yeah. he gets to game three, right? Yeah, they yeah. know he's worth that money. At Michigan State, they know Mel Tucker's not a nine and a half million dollar coach. Yeah, yeah. They what know that. This contract. Right? <laughs> right. So exactly. Exactly. You have you have allowed them to have cause the yeah. the 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 premise the the reason for your firing was the provided by that you. We're firing. Yeah, it was provided by you, man. So I, I'm I just don't know how you don't see that with how things are going, you should act a certain way anyway. But if yeah. you if you were just worried about your 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 money, your pocketbook. Knowing that it's probably some people around here that, that don't like, feel that like this money, right? And you should be getting it. this money. You need to be even more on guard. And in this particular instance, it's my belief that someone in university leadership, maybe the, the part of the leadership that didn't have the story, didn't get the memo yeah. back in the in the winter, spring, and early summer. They didn't know that. Some of them didn't. I think some of them found out and said, Man, Daniel, hey. We could get out of this. Yeah, we could get out of this, and it, it it benefits them for it to be public, because there's a clause that says you can't bring embarrassment or shame, whatever the word they use, to the university. Well, make yeah. it public now. You're embarrassing and shaming us, right? Mm -hmm. That's messed yeah. up. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's it's a hard situation to comment on, especially because like you know the particulars of it. So it's like one of those things where, hey man, just steer clear. You know what I mean? Like like. There's there's plenty of fish in the sea. This fish might be, you know, you need to steer clear, let her do her job, come in and educate the players and everything and move on. But it's one of those things where, like you said, that, man, I just think of a lesson I learned. You, <laughs> you never lose money chasing, what is it? You never lose uh, women chasing money, but you something like that. It's one of those sayings that you can't. See, judgment has to be yeah. a lot better, man. That's Sam, crazy. I think you was exactly right, too, of like, even if, you know, consensual, all those different things, right, she still she still was being kind of employed by you technically, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. the thing is, like, people can still go back to you use your influence to get this anyway. Right. right? Which is, you can't do that, right? You can't right. use your influence to do it. So, I mean, it's just so many levels, but the answer is, Stop playing goofy games, man. Just stop with the goofy games and, and the goofy prizes will not follow. Sometimes we still get goofy prizes, but you can make it easier if you just uh you still I don't know, it's tough. Yeah, so they, they give Harlan Barnett uh an opportunity to be the interim coach, deck stacked against him. Right? Cause I, I mean I already thought they were gonna be terrible this year. Now you you got all this scandal going on. Uh so you 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 know, I hope that he you know, I, I think it would be, um, I mean, he's a guy that who obviously loves Michigan State. He knows the program in and out. He he played there, you know, to give him a real opportunity. Give Harlan Barnett a real opportunity, not just, I mean, yeah, he has to coach through the season, but understand that the deck is stacked against Harlan. He's not, odds are he's not going to have a good record. So allow him the opportunity to, to to coach with a with a blank slate, with a clean slate after they get through this season. I think that would be the fairest thing to do. Cause what what what's your alternative? What they do they think they're gonna go some I saw some Spartan fans saying, well, we'll we'll just go take 
Colorado's coach again. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, just, I don't no. think man, I don't think Prime is going anywhere as long as Travis Hunter is there. Uh, who know? I mean, Shadur probably make the jump if he keeps this up. But. He can't. I mean, they would have to graduate. Yep. They already, okay. did, they already transferred once. But man, man but, I don't even know why we even, 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 know know even talking about this. Shadur could go to the draft. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. But I don't even know what we're talking about this. That's FCS. Mark is not going to the second school in the state. He's not going to do that. <laughs> with, with, when he got when he got already in Colorado, when he can run the whole state, all that, he's not doing that. Uh, you know, my my theory last week, I told y'all, and I was just, you know, bringing something out, uh, throwing something out there, not based on anything. But, man, Florida, if I'm Florida, I got my I was, eye. I was with you on that. This I got my eye on Prime. That's why this I'm, weekend is big for Florida, Sam. The Florida-Tennessee game, he, he needs a W this weekend against the Volunteers to kind of stem the tide on some of that. He, I think definitely I might get it. You think they're going to get – you I think, think Florida is going to get – I think they Tennessee? might get it. I did you see, did you see Joe Milton this last week, the last two weeks? I think they might get it. Man, did you see Florida against against Utah? Yes. Well, Utah is a good team, though. Yeah. Even though they didn't have a quarterback. They didn't have their quarterback. Right. They didn't have their quarterback. They got, they got bludgeoned. They played two quarterbacks. Oh, my, oh <laughs> man. It was – and I felt bad because – I mean, the first couple times, I think it was the first two touchdowns was given up by, I was like, oh, RJ, man, former Michigan guy, RJ Shelton, the first one, uh, he bit on a crossing route, and they threw it over his head, a bomb. And then the second one, Nate Johnson, who Michigan recruited, the yeah, quarterback sure. out of California. Man, when I say he dropped, <laughs> man, man, made a poster, made a poster that kid's with good. the move he put on him and, and made it to the end zone. And this made me man Billy Nap- Napier and how the SEC is looking now. I just don't. And then you got Florida State up the road looking like they're gonna be all right. Miami just took out Texas A and M, beat them so bad that you got Jimbo Fisher in the media talking about they cheated. They were simulating our snap. <laughs> right? I mean, Florida's the outlier here, man. Jim- I don't know Jimbo tripping. <laughs> Jimbo tripping. We've been making a lot of excuses, man. Yeah, buddy. Man, just take it on the chin, brother. You're struggling over there. <laughs> Has there ever been a time where Texas and Texas and them were good at the same time? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Because when Texas and them had their little run with Johnny, Texas was down. They was going through coaches like, like, like underwear. You change your day. To the Mac Brown days, I'm pretty sure they both were the one. They were both CSON as far as. One was good. Mac Brown days, I didn't even know Texas A&M existed. Yeah. And they you have know, been. Young, the, the Mac Brown days were defined by Vince Young. That's what yeah. it was all about. That's right. You know, he, he had a generational talent at quarterback, and that put him over the hump. And it didn't do anything else any other time, all the time he was at Texas. So, you know, miss me on I the I want to say I remember watching James Brown is – Played quarterback for Texas against Texas A&M in the Big Twelve Championship back in the day, but I could be wrong. Yeah. So, so, but the, the point to get back to the original point: if Prime leaves, it's not yeah. next year because he still got another year. Travis Hunter, maybe he convinces his son to come back. Who knows? But once you once you succeed there, why would you go from Colorado to Michigan State, especially when Colorado, you know, they'll let you outbid them for Mel Tucker. They're not gonna let you outbid them for. For prime, it's gonna take. It, it'll be a team like Florida, or or Bama, when when Nick hang them up, somebody like that. Now I don't know if, if Alabama is is ready for prime, right? If they were he's not going to FSU, he Alabama is not gonna come calling, and he's already made it clear he don't want to coach in the NFL. Right. So Auburn should have came calling. They look Auburn looks stupid. Auburn looks stupid right now. Hugh Freeze. You're not gonna never let Auburn off the hook, are you? I'm you not going to ever let off and off the hook. You know, you see, but that's an example. This is what I'm talking about, Mel. See, all that Hugh Freeze calling 1-900 numbers and all that stuff he was doing over there and setting up me. I mean, he had all kind of, you know, questionable things going on questionable in the background, right? And look at him. First, he went to work at Liberty, and now he's at Auburn? <laughs> that is never going to happen for Mel Tucker. And that's my point. You can't do everything that everyone else does. 
how he missed that memo, I don't know. Maybe maybe the nine and a half million dollars a year made him think it was the rules were different for him. They're not. The basketball coach at Cal back in the day that got in trouble. He hasn't. He never got a head coach. I think he coached at an HBCU for a couple of years. Uh, Bozeman. Same thing. As a black coach, you can't do everything everyone else does. You get in, you violate or you break rules and laws. You, you, it might be your only chance ever. It might be your only chance. It might be your only chance. I, you, you look at Hugh Freeze. I was like, how the, how is he coaching at the FBS level again? I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> but hey, rules are rules are different. Yeah, but I, I don't think Michigan State. That's that's why I say. Man, give Harlan Barnett his shot. Give Harlan Barnett his shot. That dude has paid his dues. You know, he's been he's coached else, elsewhere. He was uh DC, I think he was DC at Florida State for a minute. So give that man his his opportunity at his alma mater and see what he can do with it with a with a with a clean slate, not this stacked deck that he's coaching with this year. He doesn't have Peyton Thorne, he doesn't have Keon Coleman. Like what you expect him to do. With it now, now the coaches. Being let go in scandal. Uh, this is not this is not a fair way to judge what he could be as a head coach. So, and that's setting all the rivalry stuff aside, right? That's that's what we're doing right now. We're yeah. putting that to the side. That should that that's not a part of my thought process here. That's hey, this is a guy who who has he he wanted the job, tried for the job before, wasn't able to get it. Now he has an opportunity. Let him have a real opportunity. They don't have what do you think life. about them? So bringing Coach Mark back, that's a way for that's a way for him to get guess get his feet wet and maybe take over going forward. Or do you think I mean I, I think it's a way to for them to try to bridge the experience gap. I really don't I, I really I mean maybe he can school him on the you know the strategy because he can't tell him anything about this team. He didn't recruit any of these guys. Right. Right. I mean, I don't know that he's gonna be able to tell them anything about uh, you know, help him tactically with anything. Uh, it's just a, a guy who's been there that can help him navigate the pressures of being a head football coach. That's how I perceive it from the outside looking in. But, you know, he might have to tell Nick, he might have to tell uh, Mark, like, hey, OK. Yeah, I, I, need, I need you to hold my hand. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> when I want your help, I ask for it. Yeah. <laughs> he might he might have to tell him that, you know, so. Uh, I hope that dude, I hope he gets his shot yeah. over there in uh, in East Lansing because this is I thought they were gonna suck before this, Devin. I don't know what you thought about Michigan State. I now thought they were gonna suck before this. I thought I thought they was what was I think they over under on wins was like five or like four and a half. I picked the under. Yeah. Exactly. On TV. <laughs> I didn't think it was winning many games. They what you think about Keon Coleman's decision, five, decision now? Like it looked good before. He's, a, he's, a, he's a mastermind. He's about to go Florida State. In the real national conversation, I mean, they already in the national conversation now, man. He a good player, I, and we couldn't even tell. I mean, we knew he was pretty good. We didn't think he was that good. I mean, right? We knew he was pretty good, but maybe Sam, you knew a little bit more just because you followed him so much and recruiting all that. But I thought he was a pretty good player. I ain't see this now. Nah. He looking like he's Jamar Chase or something. Yeah, now nah, my Louisiana folks swear he a bad boy. They've been saying that since. I don't know why he went to Michigan State. So it's well, it seems like a goofy decision to me. And you play goofy <laughs> games, he almost got a goofy prize, but now he good. He played a better game, and then uh, now he, you know, yeah, got Jordan yeah, Travis right. slinging that thing around. Yeah, it was cor- he he corrected course right. It, it got it right playing with a, a Heisman Trophy candidate at uh, at Florida State at quarterback. So yeah, they're looking pretty good, looking pretty good over there. So we we'll keep an eye on it and see how this thing. How this thing plays out, but I don't. I think Mel, maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the NFL for him, uh, not as a head coach, obviously. Obviously, position coach, yeah, yeah, as a position coach. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But we need to segue as we get to the Ann Arbor portion of the show. As you heard me say at the beginning, steady dropping dimes with Daniel Horton and Devin Gardner, brought to you by our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. Hey, have you explained? The steady dropping dimes, the acronym that you created. I don't yeah, think they man. know that just yet. I don't remember you explaining that. You I didn't did explain. It. So I was trying to figure out how do we get our initials in there. Like my man Ben, our producer, who's gonna come on as we for this Ann Arbor segment coming up. I was like DDS and you know Ben and 
uh, and his wife and his family have a dental practice. I'm thinking about all these different things, and it's like, man, what uh, you know, what what can, how does this work? And I was thinking about dropping dimes, and there was another another something. And it can't just be Daniel, De- De- Devin, Daniel, and Sam, or Daniel, <laughs> Devin, and Sam. It got to be something. Sam else. and him. It can't be Sam and him. Yeah, it can't, right. It can't. It has to be something catchy, right? Yeah. And I was thinking dropping dimes because both of you guys are like point guards in your right. Daniel, a point guard on the basketball court. You're a field general, right? So you both of you guys drop dimes. So it made sense mm-hmm. to me. And so I asked my wife to help me out to come up with some ideas. And she said, why don't you just say steady dropping dimes? And I was like, that's it. I knew it wasn't you. I knew it had to be the better one. I know Sam ain't this clever now. I was like, that's it. That is it. Because I actually say that. I do steady drop and dive. So it made sense. It got the acronyms in. It fit with what you guys were in your respective sports. It all, it wove it droppers. Yes, sir. It, it wove <laughs> it all together. So that was, that was real cool. I give my wife a shout out for that. She, uh, she yeah. made it happen, but I knew you had no. I ain't know. I knew you had no creativity. You ain't. No hey man, I was thinking about dropping that. dimes. There was there was another piece. Another, I did something else with the DD, but I can't remember what it was. But uh, dropping dimes was in my head because it, it played on you guys' positions, and I just couldn't put it together. The wife put it together, so <laughs> I gotta give her credit. Yeah, you ain't uh, nothing. <laughs> speaking of making making it happen with this show, yeah. our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. Are they are the the driving force along with Golden Limo for making this show happen, and we feel like it can be a great portal for many of the great things in Ann Arbor. So I've been teasing uh, a something special that we're going to do uh, coming up in about a month or so, where we're going to go to some of our favorite spots in Ann Arbor, and we're going we're going to show footage in the, especially in the places where we need to show footage, like Rolling Hills, because people don't really don't believe I'm going to ride this bike. Up this steep embankment, but I'm gonna make it happen, People. right? And, and go to go to a bunch of different places. We're gonna take your recommendations that there are places in Ann Arbor that you think we should go. Places, uh, places you think we should go eat. Devin, I'm sure is gonna want to go to the Black Pearl, as he he mentioned it last week, right? I want to be able to get over to some of these great. You know, I'm a I'm a craft beer neophyte, right? I said on on my radio show one day. Hey, I like craft hard cider. And then dude responded to me. He said, Man, you drink in a sippy cup? Like, what what? I mean, why are you drinking the hard cider? Right. So I was like, okay, I'll try this craft beer. And it was actually a pretty cool experience going to some of the craft breweries around town. So we're gonna maybe get around and watch the lions at, at some of these uh spots in our we'll do that. Uh, but we're also gonna highlight some some different places that maybe you suggest or that we've been. And one of the places that we're going to talk about today here on the I Love Ann Arbor segment of Steady Dropping Dimes brought to you by Destination Ann Arbor is the University of Michigan's Museum of Natural History, right? And so Ben, our producer, comes on because Ben, he comes up and we do these shoots. So we've done all of these, uh, all these shoots with, with Michigan student athletes, right? By the way. We're going to do a I Love Ann Arbor, some I Love Ann Arbor segments with student athletes as well. That's a really cool thing that uh, Destination Ann Arbor is doing from an NIL standpoint with student athletes. So another reason to really support what Destination Ann Arbor is doing here in the community with opening Ann Arbor up to all the visitors and even people who live here is showing some of the places that we love or student athletes love. It might turn you on to a new spot. Or or a new uh n- new habit, yeah. a new place to eat. Uh, but whenever Ben comes up for one of these video shoots, it feels like you send your family over to the Museum of Natural History. I mean, I don't send them; they go there on their own. They're they're looking forward to it every time. Um, they've got a lot of exhibits, and they rotate some exhibits. And they definitely, uh, I know the Evolution Through Time is a big one for them. Uh, they're a lot of fossils. They're big on that. They love the, uh, exploring Michigan exhibit too, with the Wolverine there. No, they love it. I can't yeah. get them out of there. So my youngest kid, Noah, who people who follow the show know that Noah is like our miracle baby. Right. So he, he's four. 
and this kid knows every dinosaur n- known to man. Like he, he's like, Dad, that's a what did he say? A paraceralophus? I don't know, a paraceralophus or something like that. I, like, I don't know what he's. He knows all these dinosaurs. So you take take him over to the Museum of, uh, of Natural History, and he just. I mean, you would have thought the kid uh, knew new gymnastics with all the cartwheels. He was ready to do. He was on cloud nine. So especially if you have kids who, who love dinosaurs, Museum of Natural History is a hidden gem. Great dinosaur exhibit over there. Since he went the first time, the kid can't. I mean, it's like he can't wait to go back. So you come into town for, right a, the entrance, for a game right? or something anyway. This uh, for for the kids, for the, the families, is a great spot to slide into, and you can slide in there on a Sunday. That's the other thing, Ben. Right? You know, absolutely. To be able to slide in, how many times have we done shoots, and and your girls go over to the Museum of Natural History on a Sunday while we doing? I don't know. We did two shoots the last time. Yeah, they've been at least three times on a Sunday. Yeah. Yep. So and I've had a great time. You know, the fall and winter hours for the Museum of Natural History at the University of Michigan, Tuesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It is a tremendous place for families and for kids right here in Ann Arbor. You might think you have to travel a great distance to get some great uh, museum exhibits like dinosaur exhibits. You don't. And if you're coming to town and you're going to be here for a minute, and you're looking for different things to do, great place to go as well. So if you have suggestions, you can drop them in the uh, in the comments, places we should go, places you want us to go on the I Love Ann Arbor, uh, on the I Love Ann Arbor tour that we're going to do uh, coming up in a few weeks. Uh, if you want to participate in our beer tour, if that sounds cool. So, you know, I'm doing the beer too because I want to watch the Lions. Now that doesn't mean, especially if we go on a Sunday, that we won't have other teams that we'll be watching. Daniel is going to want to watch the Saints, right? You know, I don't want to watch the Saints, but you know, <laughs> if you got a team and you just want to hang out and drink some some great beer or some hard cider, even though my man said I need a sippy cup, uh, let us know, and that's going to kind of drive it how how quickly we put this tour together. And by the way, if you are interested in, you know, all of the different suggestions, recommendations, the the tour guide aspect of Destination Ann Arbor, uh, folks, you can click this code. So let's go ahead and take the uh, we'll take the overlay off real quick. So that code, that code right there, I'll put a maximize it for your screen. So check that code out, and it will unlock what's going on over at Destination Ann Arbor. Uh, and you can follow many of the recommendations. All the you'll find out about all the great things that they have coming to town, sporting events, um, you name it. You can find it out over on the Destination Ann Arbor webpage. Again, as I bring us back up now, and stop sharing the screen, and we will start talking. Uh, NFL, but Museum of Natural History. I'm telling you, hidden gem. You need to check it out. All right, fellas. So I, I mentioned the uh, the Lions. I need to call my friends over at Golden Limo because I'm taking Quincy to the Lions game against the Falcons. Um, I had gotten invited to go to the the game against the Seahawks, which I think they're going to beat the Seahawks down this weekend. But Michigan has a night game against Bowling Green, that's a hell of a turnaround to try to get up the next morning and make it down to Ford Field and be coherent enough to actually enjoy the game. So we're going to next week to the Falcons game, and I'm thinking about calling my friends at Golden Limo, who we'll talk about coming up. But these Lions look for real. Daniel and Devin, they went out and they beat the Kansas City Chiefs yes. uh, with the best football player in the world. That's saying something to me, even if he didn't have his number one target there. Yeah, you know, they play really well. Uh, and, you know, it, it, we didn't see what we thought we would see from the offense as far as, you know, just being super explosive and, and kind of picking up where they left off last year. But you got to know that uh, when you don't play your guys in the preseason, you're going to start off a little slower. 
And obviously, Kadarius Tony had a lot to do with the win because he just dropped that ball right into Branch's hands. But I think the most impressive thing about the Lions is it's Brad Holmes and what he's been able to do the last two years. In that game, had it not been for Jack Campbell, uh, uh, Laporta, Branch especially, yeah. they don't win this game, right? Because y- y- you got to remember, on that play where Branch gets the interception, before that play, it was a wide-open completion that, that Patrick Mahomes had. And Jack Campbell, after dropping into his hook to curl off to the right, flipped his hips similar to the way he did against C.J. Stroud and caught a one-hand interception. I remember it like it was yesterday watching film getting prepared to call Iowa games last year. He flips his hips and fully extended dives, bats the ball down, right? So that gives them an opportunity to get to the play that uh, Branch made where, obviously, uh, a huge assist goes to Kadarius Tony, who was tripping in that game, obviously. <laughs> but, I mean, the rookies and, and Sam Laporta, a bunch of key catches and, and picking up first downs, and he was at the point of attack a few times, and I was super impressed because I just didn't know if he had that in his game uh, as a blocker. And then uh, Jameer Gibbs, right? I mean, it just explosive change up. And, and then the new free agent signing where, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, I can't believe we're losing Jamal Williams. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? He had a bunch of one-yard touchdowns, and I am pissed because he took Barry Sanders' record down, which is not okay. But as far as a talented runner, I don't think he's that talented of a runner. He was great with his passion and giving speeches and all that. But we got to upgrade. The Lions got to upgrade, and and I think that 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 was super important. So I think a round of applause, even though it's only the first week, I think that you can see a lot more from the Lions. Brad Holmes needs a round of applause. You see that look on Daniel's face. You know you talk about his man, right? No, he ain't like that. He yeah, seen him play. <laughs> Daniel seen him play. He know he is not like that. He know he do not deserve to have Barry Sanders' record come down for a bunch of one yard touchdowns. Not at all. He had, uh, I think, this weekend for us. He had eighteen carries for all of forty five yards. Come on, man. Hey, <laughs> I didn't even know those stats. I just seen him play. Remember, I, I, you know, I do a lot of Lions. I break it down. Now his passion, and I think he should be credited with some of the culture change at Michigan. I mean, not at Michigan, and with the Lions, right? He was very passionate. He embraced the fans. He did all these different things. That's fine. But that ain't going to help you win all the games now. We need to win all the games. That's what we want to do. So we need to go ahead and ship you out. We appreciate what you've done for us. We're going to get a real back in here. Plus, we're going to draft another back that, that's super explosive in uh, Jameer Gibbs and I think the, the sky's the limit for the Lions, especially once they get on track on offense and get that kind of rhythm that they had at the end of the season last year. Yeah, let me let me piggyback on that and give Brad Holmes his due. I, I've been a Brad Holmes fan. Admittedly, I was a little – I was feeling a certain kind of way about the draft, not because I didn't think they got really good players. I was, it was because you ain't talked to me. Okay, I didn't talk to you about the draft. I was, I was projecting them to draft Jack Campbell in the second round. We talked about Jack Campbell a lot, right? So like, like him a lot. Uh, really like uh, I like Laporta. I'm just not a fan of of drafting tight ends, you know, above the the third round. I mean, I all the that. top tight ends in the league right now, mostly are third round and below. So just you know, value for the position. Yeah. But those guys, I I felt like all of them would contribute, but that they did in a day, uh, you know, game one, Devin. I think you're on to something. Those mm-hmm. he was right about those guys, but I'm I'm thinking about the flips. So he, I mentioned it last week. You flip T.J. Hawkinson, who just got. I mean, I, they paying T.J. Hawkinson like his name Travis Kelsey. They paying like, T.J. Hawkinson like his name is Tra- or Gronk, yeah, something of that sort. It's like, man, what are we doing? I say, so you got rid of him and you flipped him for the most part into yeah. Laporta and Branch. That was huge. And by the way, the the original flip was getting Jared Goff and two first round draft picks for Matthew Stafford, a quarterback that Jared Goff is better than right now. You know why I say that? I make this case right now. Because you're smart. Matthew Stafford is one of the one of the best arm talents I've ever seen. Agree. Who never elevated his team. Agree. He had Calvin Johnson. He had three first-round tight ends. Right? He had some dudes around. They made the playoffs a couple times. Had a right? thousand-yard worker in there. Yeah, but he – he does not elevate the team around him. You mean to tell me all that time he was here, he didn't have enough guys around him to win one playoff game? One. Sam, and that's where I'll be at with the, with the whole, 
Matthew Stafford thing. We are so enamored with his talent. Listen, Joe Burrow, I wouldn't say he can even hold a candlestick to the talent of Matthew Stafford, but he went into an equally, maybe more desolate organization with no offensive line, and he elevated everybody and made it happen. That's what you do when you no more pick. You make it happen. So all the excuses and, oh, we need to get more help, oh, it's just a bad organization. If you that guy, you are going to elevate. And that's what Joe Burrow did. So once I saw Joe Burrow do that, I mean, before I saw Joe Burrow do that, I was already like, nah, dog, you have plenty of time. But once I saw Joe Burrow do that, with it's an example of the exact same thing. He got drafted number one to the worst team in the NFL, and it's a terrible organization. He never won nothing. And he said, yeah, hold my beer. Hold my beer. I'll, go, I'll, get, I'll make it happen. And I'll get beat up in the process and still make it happen. So I, I, look, how, look how Jared Goff came in and, and led a young, desolate team, right? Made all those dudes better around him. Yeah. Matt Stafford never did that. And, yeah. and, and the most recent example of what kind of leader he is, I'm, allow me to be presumptuous for a minute. You, you guys see what his wife just did to him? So Ooh. you don't know the story. So Matthew yeah, Stafford, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad, yeah, bad. Matthew Stafford walked really into really the really press really conference bad. to answer yeah. some questions because his wife has gone on her podcast to tell the world that, yeah, you know, Matt, he's having a hard time in his locker room because he just can't relate to these young guys, these young players, and they're all and, on and their the is bad. You can't relate or you choose not to. Right. Because I, I lost Tom Brady do it. Uh, 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 Aaron Rodgers just did it. It's a yep. thing that you can do. You can get on TikTok. I mean, you don't got to get a TikTok, but you can, you know, have fun, do your little handshakes, do all the stuff if you truly want to because you know it's going to help the team. But at your core, at your nature, you're not an elevator of others. You're right. not. So, so if they're on their phones and you want them off, how about you step away, hey, fellas? Let's go. Let's go do this or let's go do that. Really you got simple, a lot of right? money from the Lions. See, but, but my they issue is beyond that. How is your wife? I, my wife and I are equals. I don't tell her what to do. She doesn't tell me what to do. So it's not that kind of party. But my wife would never go out in the world and t- and tell the world something that I told her in confidence in the privacy of her own home. On Come your on, man. You told her that. <laughs> That's That's wrong. Wrong. The Matthew Stafford slander. That's a Dallas kid. That's a <laughs> Dallas guy. <laughs> Hey man, hey, we, we drop dive. No matter, so it don't matter on who, we drop them anyway. <laughs> we we gave him his flowers for being so talented. Most talented, one of the most we've ever best. You know, you know, we we gave his flowers. But all the other stuff, it, we just dropping facts. We should we gonna change the names. Just dropping straight facts a little bit. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, but the lions, the lions look like they're they're one of the contenders for sure. Dallas look good week one, fellas. Dallas look good week one. You, trust so you don't want to convert, Daniel, from, from the Saints over to Dallas? No, sir. I, 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 think, I think there's a lot of things you'll have a better chance of seeing before you see me brute for the Cowboys. They can't be trusted, Sam. You go, First of all, they play Daniel Jones. Let's be clear. <laughs> okay? <laughs> right? There's no way he should have the money he has, but whatever. I ain't mad at nobody getting their money. But obviously, we know Daniel Jones is not a very good quarterback. That's who they played against. I don't think we can read into that much at all. You know what's crazy? I'm going to get on DraftKings, and, and I'm going to bet not only the Jets to cover, I'm going to bet that they win the game. $20. $20 is going to give me a 400 What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? The, the Cowboys are the model of ineptitude. As soon as you pat them on the back, Coach Ryan used to have a saying. Come See, on, that's man. why I can't give kids compliments. As soon as I pat you on the butt, you, you, you poop right in my hand. Every you single think, time. You think the Jets going to be able to score on them dudes? Yep. You think the Jets? With I said Zach Wilson, voice with a lot, without a lot of confidence, but I got 20 on it. The Jets with Zach Wilson, that quarterback, and an offensive line that got, that got, you know, Aaron Rodgers knocked out for the season, and you know the Cowboys getting after it with the pass rush, they're going to score enough points to beat them dudes. So, sure, so when sure we come back on Wednesday, not, I want you to pop this clip in. The Jets not playing so, the Cowboys. Just not playing the Cowboys. You you talking about somebody else? I know, I know. Jets at Cowboys nine 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 minus nine. I got you. Good Cowboys. Cowboy. I'm not a Cowboys Wait. fan, but it would be. Wait, they, they're in the comments and they're talking about what Johnny Walker. What does he say? 
Devin must be a Johnny Walker guy. He must have had some before he came. I don't even know who Johnny Walker is. It's a drink, <laughs> Devin. It's a drink. Oh. <laughs> Seth said oh, he like Maker's Mark and Woodford Reserve. Devin has some of that, too. He, I he will be the man on this one. Jamie Twig said, I live in Moonshine County. So you know what they sell the Moonshine County. Devin has some of that, too. Oh, here's one. Here's another one. Here's another one. He said, depends on the brand of bourbon. Ask Devin about the brand. He's drinking all that right now. If he think that Zach Wilson and company gonna be able to score on the Cowboys, come it's on! Gonna so I got a question for Devin. The, the QB so girl, right? So you saw the Giants play. Uh -huh. A lot of the success last year, right? Daniel Jones ran for over seven hundred yards as a quarterback. You think that's repeatable this year? Well, yeah, because he can't throw. Yeah, that's what it looked like. That's what you know. That conundrum is right. Because if he tries to stand back there and be a Passer is not going to. We're going to lose bad, like they right. did. And if you and if he turns into a runner, you know how long is he going to? How long listen, is going to last? Listen, that everybody, way? everybody's giving him all this credit, talking about Vanilla Vic and all that. And he he's a decent athlete. We've seen much better athletes like that look like him, but yeah. he's a decent athlete. Are we forgetting who their running back is and how much attention he draws? And that's right. why he's so important. And that's why they shouldn't have paid him. They should have probably paid him. That's all I'm saying. You you acting like he out here the main character. He ain't Lamar Jackson, and they focusing on him, and he's still getting right. down. He got <laughs> they got the whole defense shifted to stop this other guy who's a creative player, and then he just finding a way with some good athletic ability on my dad and getting down the field. Remember, he's the same guy that had that long run and just failed. Yeah, he he the same he's guy. Like, he he the same guy. Definitely true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he fell <laughs> down. Who shot John? <laughs> you see, did you see the 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 uh the cowboys cracking on there? You see that big hit? I think it was Trayvon Diggs hit him and and caused the interception. Man, man, uh, man. I mean, I'm just telling you. I, I just don't understand how you how you I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And, and I think it's more of the arrogance of like that how much they believe John uh Debo. They just think he's just an amazing coach. And I'm sure he might be an amazing coach. But how, how far can you go? Like, we, we, it's about the players, guys. It's about the players, and that's yeah. in every sport. I don't so care he, how good a coach you are. Pop is struggling right now because he ain't got no players. And that's why we're able to right. win the Yama. Here, here, here's how you could be right. Will Dak play as bad? Because you know who play like dog? See, y'all forgetting that Dak played for the Cowboys. Y'all are forgetting. And he only threw for like 140-something, some, something yep. real low. So he don't want to prove himself against a bad team. Well, 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 hold up. And I'm not – I hate the Cowboys now. But Dak is at least – he he at least got the memo. Josh Allen, they, they told both them dudes, take care of the football. That, yeah. that was the edict on both of them because Dak had all those interceptions last year. Josh Allen has the most turnovers in like the last six years, right? So the talk in the offseason with both those dudes – has been, don't turn the football over. Dak went out, and guess what? Didn't turn the football over. Josh Allen, I, man, I thought him and Kadarius Tony, I, I thought they were they was wearing a different uniform underneath that one they had on the outside last week. The point hey, man, they was playing for the other spot. They was playing for the other spot, or they was playing for some money, but they wasn't playing for their teams, that's for sure. Mm, I agree. Listen, no, man. Okay. I'm just going to suggest because Dak is going to be trying to prove this is a great defense. And the thing is, he don't got to worry about what well, he he thinks he don't got to worry about the offense making him pay for turnovers, right? So now you think he can try stuff, right? He going to try stuff against that talented defense. He going to turn the ball a little, little too much, and they're going to cover, and they're going to win the game. Look at that. He, 13 zero to four, interceptions. And zero touchdowns. But do you think zero cool? interceptions. But do you think he's cool? A, a franchise quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys in the public eye. You think he's cool with 13 to 24? That's 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 just over 50% for 143. The whole talk about the Cowboys is like, dang, they beat them by 40, and their quarterback was garbage. Yeah. Imagine if they had a real quarterback. You think he wanna hear that? He gonna just roll out and be cool with that? Nah, dog. He's gonna try to make some plays. And I with like the, with the money he's making, they could. They could spend less money to play complimentary football, right? <laughs> I'm about to go get me. I'm about to get on DraftKings right now. I'm hey, man, but he he got he just can't play bad. He got to play like crap. He got to be like Josh Allen. Four, to, three interceptions. His interceptions was like punts. It was like he was punting. Like, but what you, are you doing? You know and then he had me. two fumbles too. Did Come you on, hear the broadcast though? This guy is just throwing the ball up in the middle of the field versus single high defense. 
Yeah. And you know Musa, eight years old. He know I will lose my mind on him if he throw the ball up in the middle of defense versus single high defense. He did it three times, or, or two times, and then third time just a terrible throw. Yeah. And the broadcast is just making these excuses for him. Meanwhile, on the other side, as much as we whatever we say about uh, uh, Zach Wilson, not a good player or whatever, he completely outplayed him. And they was killing him. We didn't give him no credit. He drive down a ton of game. He throw a touchdown. Oh, it's just not a good throw. Listen, Chief, what, what, where was that energy when your boy Josh Allen was throwing the ball up like punts? I'm confused. I don't like it. I don't like it. I know you got your preconceived notion when you come to the game. But the game suggests Zach Wilson was playing significantly better after not playing, not having any rest with the ones. Right? He plays with Aaron Rodgers ain't even on the rest of the ones. He ain't plays with the ones since 03. He ain't been with the ones. He yeah. has not played with the ones, and he's not expecting to play on the biggest stage. Uh, 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 September 11th, all the all the hoopla, all the hope that Aaron Rodgers, and he still went out and won that game and outplayed him, and they ain't give him no love. He didn't get the interview at the end of the game. Hey, he almost got his face mask knocked off one time and still got up and, and drove him down the field. You know I mean? That's what, like, and, and, and I just don't like the I, I was very disappointed of like how they was just showing so much love to Josh Allen and he's got to be better, super soft, the way they was talking about it. And then when, when Zach Wilson get up, oh, the guy just, it's just not, whoa, whoa. It's a game being played and he's out playing that guy. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> Man, hey. The the Jets just they just tricked off uh, eighty million dollars, man. Eighty million dollars guaranteed. They went out, got Aaron Rodgers, and didn't get it, no any protection at all. They went out, and got a Lamborghini, put it on some tins, man. It's like what 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 are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Jets, come on, man. This is ridiculous. Everything was riding on him, and you're right. Zach Wilson got a raw deal uh, with the commentary. But he is not going to lead them to the promised land. He is I, not. I, I ain't you saying gotta have... to the promised land. I say ain't going to beat the Cowboys. Listen, well, <laughs> well, they, what they need is for Dak to play like his name is Josh Allen. That's what they need. Then they can win. Is he capable? Like, is that he ain't capable that? Bad, though. Is he capable of that? Hey man, that's defense. Is he capable of that? Let me tell you something. Sam, is he capable? Because he <laughs> had more interceptions than Josh Allen last year and way less games. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make it real plain for you. I'm gonna make it real plain for you about what you're comparing. So you know all those ride share services out there. Uh -huh. they're, they're, they're they're regular, they're off brand, right? Yeah. That, you know, you, 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 even. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this this is this is not the way you want to travel if you have a choice, right? If you got a choice, you ride with my guy Sean Duval at Golden Limo. It is, you know, what stands out. And I'll bring the analogy together at, at, at here in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay. what they do so well at Golden, and I'm gonna, I got a little commercial that we're gonna play next week because they took me to the first game. They took me to the first game. You know, the service picking you up at your door, taking care of your bag. You got the water in the back. You got the driver who's safe. The, the driver who's verified. The driver who knows his way around. It is just an attention to detail and service that you don't get with just some regular ride share, right? So, I mean, if if you find with that, if you find with with ride share, I'm not you know, it's not anything wrong a ride share. traveling that way. If you don't have a choice, but if you have a choice, you want to ride on Golden. And you know another reason why because of how active they are in the community. You know how I learned about Destination Ann Arbor and all the great work that they do in this community uh, for local businesses and uh, exposing them to, to people in and outside of Ann Arbor? I learned about it from Golden Limo. When Freddie J was uh, doing the fundraising campaign over at Ipsy High for, for so many kids that were in need on the team, just in the school, you know who was the driving force behind that campaign? Golden Limo. It's one of those things where they are not just a business in the community. They live in the community. They serve the community as well. So whenever I travel, whether it's going to a high school game or going to Paris, I ride on Golden. And I make hey, one call. I make one call. I make Sam. one call. So let me let me bring it let me bring bring it back around, Devin. Okay. All right. So the Cowboys right now, <laughs> the Cowboys right now, they they rode into town on Golden Limo. You. 
the only way they lose this game is if they get they feel they start feeling themselves and they think how they travel don't make a difference and they decide to call one of these ride shares. They try they decide to ride regular. You gotta I don't think they're gonna go back though, Devin, because once you are like that, once you go out and perform that way and you win 40 to nothing, you taste that kind of success. You don't wanna do it different. Right? That that'd be like, you know what it'd be like? It'd be like me hiring DG to call my game. And then feeling like yeah. oh, my my game look good no matter who call it, and me letting Reggie Bush come call it. I knew you was about to do that. That's what I it'd knew be it. like. That's what it'd be Sam, like. Sam, Sam, Sam. Name first up all, and first, firstly, I don't think Don Limo gonna appreciate you equating them to the ineptitude that is the Cowboys. That's first. They thing. won forty to nothing. Kevin. <laughs> That's fine. Secondly, I might be going to the Michigan game, and I'm gonna need a ride home. It, you know, just putting it out there. <laughs> okay. Just saying, I'm just so putting it out there. I need a ride to Southfield from the up. game. Uh, you know, just saying. We gonna hook that up. We gonna just we gonna call. Sean. You know what? We are gonna bring Sean Duvall on one week because people need to know, need to know Sean and all the great thing. He he. So a dude who who stays in the background and doesn't let people know how active he is in the community. I mean, whether it's taking kids to the to the capital so they can have that experience, just all kinds of things that you never hear about that you should hear about. Uh, you see his buses all the time because they they he carries every Michigan team everywhere, the football team, the basketball, yeah, every Michigan not. team rides on gold, right? So we'll make sure, Devin, that you ride on golden as well. We'll Take make sure care. that you get from the airport to the game. No, 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 no. I just need I just need to get from the game to the crib. From the game, <laughs> we'll make that happen. We make that happen, man. And when yeah. when Daniel comes to town, he'll ride on yeah. Golden. When sure. we go around on the I Love Ann Arbor tour, we'll be riding on Golden. And if we get this beer tour together, we'll definitely be riding <laughs> on Golden for that. We just need to know if you guys would be down for it. So if we put together this beer tour, maybe it'll just be a couple of Sundays. Maybe it's a. We'll see. We'll see what games we do. But if you're interested. And going to some of the, the spots, you got Monty's Public House, which is really good here in town. You got um, Arbor Brewery, which is really good. Wolverine Beer is really good. Uh, there are a few different spots that, you know, I like. The Session Room is another really good spot here in Ann Arbor. So, you know, if you're interested in maybe getting out and about and schooling me on the craft beer game, Drop a, a note in the comments and say you'd be interested in going. And also drop your suggestions. If you have places that we should go, you think we should go in Ann Arbor as part of the I Love Ann Arbor tour, drop that in the comments as well. So, fellas, I mean, who is your team, by the way, Devin? I know uh, Daniel is the Saints. Who is your team? Uh, I just like good football, you know. I just like good football. I like the Lions. I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, man, you just made me sound like a Cowboys fan. You know, I'm rooting for the Jets. I want to see Sauce get it, right? I was saying if the if Aiden had not been on the board, I was saying Sauce Gardner is going to be that dude. I was saying that when he was, they would say he was going to get picked in the teens, and I was oh. right. I was oh. right. So I want to see him do well, but I don't think they got enough to beat the Cowboys, man. I just want you to make just make sure you pay, you you ping this uh this whole this conversation and your and your and your voice, voicefulness, I guess, is that if that's the word I'm looking for, about how they don't have a chance. And then when they when they win, I just want you to play it back next week on Wednesday. All right. Uh, Abe Froman said, that's crazy. Lions fan said you can't trust the Cowboys. You're not a Lions fan, though, right? I mean, I, you know, I, I'm from Detroit. So, I, you know, I, I'm born into it. Like, my brother used to listen to DMX all the time. So, I have to like DMX. Like, I don't have no choice. Yeah, it's in my blood. Did you did you put this up? Did you write that down? Yes. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dak in the mirror. Hey, did you see there was another one on on on, on Twitter that was it was K Manage the mirror. <laughs> Manage the mirror. I was like, that's a good one. I, I I feel comfortable cracking these jokes in the NIL era. If he was still playing, yeah, you get paid right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're already overtime, folks. Again. For any information on the spots that we talked about here in Ann Arbor, uh, you know, any any tourism attraction, places to eat, places to stay, Destination Ann Arbor is your guide. You can get more information by going to the Destination Ann Arbor. I'm going to their website. Excuse me, something got in my throat there real quick. Good grief. 
Hey, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm all right. You all right, brother? Yeah, I'm all right. But all you got to do is uh, make your way over to their website uh, at, at destinationannarbor.org. Again, that's destinationannarbor.org slash myannarbor. And the portal to all things Ann Arbor is right there. You know, tourism attractions, places to eat, places to stay, you name it. And when you come to town, or even if you're out of town, you're heading out of town, always ride on Golden. Go to goldenlimo.com. I'm going to introduce you guys to Sean Duval uh, in some coming weeks. And Sean, I have my back. He's a Lions fan. You know, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to ask Sean if we can ride on Golden to the Falcons game. How about that? That that would be a good luck charm. We'll definitely win. That happens. So, <laughs> uh, fellas, as always, uh, we are – we, we handle every topic. We talk Mel Tucker at the beginning. You miss any aspect of this show. You can always check out the replay over on the YouTube page. Subscribe to the channel. Like the videos. That's how we keep going and growing. And we're probably going to move the time. We'll probably move it up so we aren't so late at night. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. And then we'll be on a regular schedule once we determine the time earlier in the day. You'll be able to hear Devin on Mondays on the Monday morning quarterback. 9 to 10 a.m. His film studies go up on Wednesdays. That film study is up right now as he breaks. He broke down why J.J. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, uh, no one, no quarterback in the country is playing better than him. You can see that breakdown as well over on our YouTube page. So be sure to check that out. Until hey, next time. Doing Monday morning quarterback, I haven't missed one time ever. What are you talking about? Have I missed like on a on a on a thing that I've said about Michigan football? Have I missed once? I Did you mean, remember? That I can remember. I mean, you you see, that's my wife does that, man. Like you put me on the spot, expect me to remember something from last year. Can this, you this, remember me missing you know, one line all time? I, I I've watched all the episodes. The brother don't miss. Just tell me, bro. I don't think I miss, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Look, Sam, go ahead and go through the archives. <laughs> all right, folks. That's gonna do it for the latest edition. I'm steady dropping dives. We'll see you next week.